Hi, this is Mr. McGovern, and in this uh, Level 3 Waves video, which is the fourth video in the series about diffraction gratings and interference patterns, I'm going to look at the first interference formula you're going to use to do calculations. Uh, so here I've just got an image from a, an exam, which is a, a sort of a simple double slit, and in fact it has two speakers instead of two, two slits, and what you get along A and B, you get some um, loud spots and quiet spots and loud spots and quiet spots. Um, so what we call is, we call the the pay, the bit right in the middle, uh, we call that the n equals zero. That's a loud spot and that's directly in the middle of the two speakers. Now either side of that, the next loud spots are uh, n equals one and below is n equals one as well. So in between, if you were walking from n equals zero to any of the n equals ones, you go from loud to quiet to loud again. And then the next loud spots out have the numbers two and two and you keep counting and so on and so on. So the formula um, which we're going to be introduced to uh, looks like this, n lambda equals d sine theta. So what do each of these things mean and, and what is it used for? Um, so n we discussed already was, was counting which loud spot we're talking about and then lambda is the wavelength of, um, in this case it would be sound but we could be of light as well. The D is the distance between um, the speakers in this case, or it could be the distance between the slits, if it's a double slit or a diffraction grating. So that could be, in this case it's 1.25, it could be a very, very small number if it's a diffraction grating. And theta is just the angle that um, that is basically between bright spots or loud spots. So it's kind of how spread out the diffraction grating is. Um, it's a pretty straightforward formula to use we can use it to show, in our last video we talked about the differences between diffraction gratings and double slits. Now I said that the big difference was diffraction gratings have a clearer interference pattern, but also diffraction gratings have um, usually many more lines per millimeter, so much smaller gaps between slits. So if you rearrange this formula to put D on one side, so I've divided both sides by D, and you have D's very very small, what it means is it's sine theta, and theta is going to get much bigger. So that formula kind of shows you that for um, a diffraction grating with very very small distance between slits you get a much more spread out interference pattern. So that was um, explaining the formula and in the next video I'll explain the second formula, there's two of them. Um, the second half of this video is where does this formula come from? Well, it's only really for experts who are going for excellence uh, or, or see themselves as a scholarship student. So this is an old part of a video I've I've made um, already in this series, which is basically why we get um, bright spots. So here's just a simple double split, and we get light going through the double slit, and if we look at concentrating on the area in the middle, which we know is a bright spot, that happens because waves from both slits have to travel the same distance, so they arise in phase. That leads to constructive interference, so it's a bright spot. Um, and what's really important is, in this case, the path difference so comparing the length that each wave has to travel is zero. There is no difference in the length they each travel. So this path difference is really the key. I'll give another example, um, so looking at some other point on the screen up here, look at how far the waves have to travel, and you see one wave has to travel further than the other, and because of that they arrive out of phase. And in this case they're completely out of phase, um, and we get destructive interference, it's a dark spot, um, I've done some quick animation here to compare the two lengths that they had to travel. So that's one length, I've just straightened it up. The other length, I'll straighten that up so we can make a good comparison. And when you put them side by side, you see that one travelled further than the other, and it travelled further by exactly half a wavelength. Right? And that's why we get destructive interference. So where does the formula come from? So it, it, it really, the key is the path difference. It's all about path difference. Really, we're just putting some maths together to compare how much longer one line, one of those lines is than the other line. So how would we do that? So first of all we have to see how much of an angle are the lines on. So I've done a, a, a nice um, horizontal line there and put my angle symbol in. Um, this next dash line, that kind of it cuts off the bottom length so that they're the same length. And the extra bit, which is um, indicated by the red arrow, uh, if I get my here, that's how much longer one la path is than the other. That's the path difference. That small section there is how much longer one path is than the other path. 
you can make this into a little triangle by putting the other end of the triangle here and now you've got two sides of the triangle one's the path difference um, you've got the distance between the slits is the other side of the triangle and you've got this angle and so when you do so car toa um, I've got distances on the hypotenuse path difference is the opposite it's so opposite over hypotenuse we get sine theta equals this um, we move the D to the left hand side and remember path difference leads to constructive interference if it's a whole number of wavelengths um, and that's where we get n lambda so n being a whole number 0, 1, 2, 3 times wavelengths and that's where that formula comes from so the next video I'm going to go into the second formula and when you can't and can't you can and can't use it and for the same reason I'll, I'll go into where it comes from just for the experts as well